Hello, hello, happy Thursday. Hey, Kimberly, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Ask Serena. I am here. Hello, JK Fusen. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Let me turn this around. Hello. Hi, everybody. What's up? I don't know, but every week I feel as though Thursday comes quicker and quicker. It just seems to feel that way. I feel like we were just together last Thursday discussing moms returning to work and all that jazz. But um, great week, exhausting week. <laughs> so I like literally made it here by the skin of my teeth tonight. But I am here because I'm energized to talk about wellness and well-being and, you know, how I kind of keep it all together, if you will. Um, and trust me, nothing that you're going to hear tonight is perfection. <laughs> I'm still a work in progress. So before we jump into it, let me just start off by letting you know a little bit about me. So I am Janine Truitt. I am the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC based in Port Jefferson Station, New York. And my business is a multidisciplinary business strategy and management consulting firm focusing on HR and talent management strategy digital marketing strategy, um, executive coaching, career coaching, as well as just general business strategy advisement for small to mid-sized business and startups. So that's a little bit about me. And obviously you can find out more about my business at talentthinkinnovations.com. As Sarina Live is my weekly show. So every week I pick a new topic and we just kind of chat about it. it can be anything from the world of work to pop culture it's whatever i choose but for the month of march i am focused on women and so the past few weeks at least for uh last week we kind of been covering women's issues um last week we covered women returning to work after starting a family and so that replay is actually up on my YouTube channel now, so you can catch that. But tonight, we are going to chat about wellness. And I feel like wellness is all the buzz. Like, probably if I go back the past two years or so, I feel like everybody seems to be wanting to speak about wellness. And then this year in particular... I just feel like the conversation about wellness is at an all-time high. I read a ton. I read a lot of blogs and I read just a lot in general. And I probably can end up pinpointing two to three articles um, daily almost that are geared towards some sort of sentiment around wellness. Thank you for joining, Dom Tillman. Welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, so it's really quite important, um, from a general standpoint, but everybody seems to be focused on it. And I know for me, hey, thanks for saying hello. Absolutely. Um, so I know for me, it's been top of mind at least since early last year. So if you've kind of been following my shows and following my storyline and what I have kind of done in the past two years, I basically left my full-time job and went full-time into my business, which is what I just explained. Hey, boo. Hey, Mimi. Um, and went full-time into my business. And so that transition, while it is extremely exciting, it's extremely exhausting for somebody who thrives on perfection. Um, hey, Lataria. So I am, and I have said many times over on previous shows that I am a recovering perfectionist. And so everything in my life, I have tried to plan to a T. So that said, many days, this is the honest truth, many days in the past two years, I feel as though I let my wellness go. I just, I let it go. Um, 
not purposely, but I really wasn't focused on it. So there were a few different things that happened. I mean, one, hey girl. Um, one, I'm a mom of three. So I have a seven year old. I have a almost two year old and almost four year old. So if you can imagine, they run me ragged as it is. <laughs> There's that. Um, but I think as a mom, you tend to get wrapped up and, and this may be true of parenting in general, but more specifically for moms, you kind of get wrapped up in the day to day and you get wrapped up in what you need to do for your children. I know that's been true for me. And so I'm just very heavily always focused on what do the kids need? What are they doing? Where do they need to be? Are they good? That kind of thing. And then when you kind of topple that with being a wife, then it's, you know, is my husband good? You know, did I cook something tonight that everybody liked? And, you know, am I keeping my house together? And all these different things. So there's that aspect. And then building a business on top of that um, and not, you know, very early on, not really knowing how every anything was gonna pan out. I really just had no clue. And there were rough days. I'm not even gonna front with you guys. Rough, rough days, right? And I guess my inclination as a perfectionist is to think, <laughs> so Mimi K, she knows, I think I might've mentioned last week that this is like my bestie right here. So like we kind of went through this trajectory together so if anybody knows that i'm telling the truth or if you have any doubts in your mind whether or not i'm telling the truth she'll verify it hey david thank you for joining really really rough days i want to go back and emphasize that so like rough days rough days financially rough days in the sense that you know, you conjure things in your head and you have an expectation of how you see things going and when they don't go as such or when you go through, yo, long time. How are you? Thanks for joining. Um, so, yeah, rough financially, you know, in some spots and then, you know, other things that go on in life, deaths in the family, sicknesses, you have it, <laughs> breastfeeding. <laughs> All of that, yes, and it's extremely difficult. I mean, I see so many articles about having grace. And, oh, thank you. You're so sweet. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I read all these articles and I've done like all these different challenges about walking in grace, right? And so walking in grace meaning this is, you, you're just grateful no matter what happens. It's extremely difficult. Like, I'm a good person. Yes, yes, requires so much grace. I really am a very grateful person. I, honest to God, I really am. But what I found is, you know, I'm a little less graceful in times of hardship. And so, you know, my time of hardship was kind of longer than I would have liked it to be. Um, and so it took a lot, not anymore. Praise Lord, hashtag won't he do it. <laughs> you know, so um, I've learned that you have to be just as graceful and grateful in those times of adversity um, as you are when things are good. But that said, as far as the wellness aspect of it, during my time of asking why me, why is this happening? You know, all of these different things that anybody would ask when they're going through adversity. I just was, I was gone. I mean, not in a crazy loony thing, like I was going to go and run around outside naked, but just, you know, I had kind of lost a little bit of sense of self because I was just kind of like a hamster going round and round, trying to figure out like, what did I do wrong? What did I do to deserve this? What more do I need to be doing? And meantime, a lot of great things were happening for me. I mean, great, great, great things. Yes, I did. Um, great things were happening for me, but I wasn't able to kind of relish in that moment. I wasn't able. 
I was just kind of, what's next? What's next? What's next? So, you know, last year was quite pivotal in the sense that I decided after like a fateful few times um, that that's not a way to be. That, um, you know, on some level, I'm more than my work. Right. So a lot of what I've done, especially when you're building a startup, anybody that has built a startup or is building a startup currently knows that there are a lot of painstaking hours that goes into that. I've been at it since 2013. And so, um, you know, I've just been spinning my wheels, spinning my wheels, churning stuff out. And, you know, part of that lots. Right. Letary, you know. So. You know, part of what I had to kind of unlearn in terms of the perfection and then change was, you know, to one, live in the moment and two, um, to not go so fast. I had to learn to just kind of slow down and know that being right in the space that I was in, whether it was dealing with adversity or something great, was where I was supposed to be. And that that is fine. And it's so funny because I was listening to a blab today um, by this blog that I love. Right. So, and I've spoken about this before. So great, great point, Letaria, that a lot of the sentiment that's out there, right, the world is moving extremely fast. But the other aspect of it is everybody has bought into fast. So I think I might have discussed this like really early on when I did my Beware the Hustle Periscope on Ass Arena. There's this whole like group of people, entrepreneurs or budding ones at that, who are having everybody buy into this idea that you got to hustle hard. If you're not hustling, you're not doing anything. You know, if you're not up till 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning working, your business is going to fail. And it's complete bullshit. <laughs> Sorry, it's complete bullshit. I mean, yes, you have absolutely balance is key and you do have to hustle. I, giving them the side eye all the way because I can tell you what that so I've told you a little bit about what happened to me last year. Literally, I kept a schedule. I was a hustle queen from say about July through November and from about October through November I was on two different coasts um, for about three weeks with these short spaces of time with little to no sleep um, and just going and what happened to me in November is I think I had a bout of exhaustion in fact I'm pretty sure I had a bout of exhaustion because I just couldn't get with it. I just, I couldn't get with it. I couldn't move. I was just really lethargic. I felt very shaky. It was a feeling that I don't want to feel again. Not good at all. I had really ran myself ragged. Now, granted, I had also gotten some great opportunities. And so I'm, I don't resent that. But I also realized that I nearly burnt myself out. Absolutely. I nearly burnt myself out. And in which case, had I done that, I could have been hospitalized and then I wouldn't have been good for anybody. I wouldn't have been good for my family. I wouldn't have been good for my business or anything. An opportunity wouldn't have made a damn difference. It just wouldn't. Yeah, and having lived that way, I don't know. Yeah, no, absolutely, David. Um... So yeah, I don't like this hustle thing. And I mean, you know what? Godspeed. If that's your spiel and that's what you're making business off of, whatever. But I just want to put a different message out there, which is that, yes, there is a hustle behind having a business. There are times when you've got to pull all-nighters because you've got a proposal to go out or whatever. Fine. But I not only function better when I have more sleep, I'm clearer in my thinking. Absolutely. Completely. Completely. Completely two different things. So I'm just 
much clearer in what I have to get done and what I want to get done. Um, and you miss out, absolutely. You miss out a ton. And I feel like since I've slowed it down a bit, you know what? The opportunities that I was afraid of missing, I'm not missing them at all. They're still coming and it's fine. Um, and my business is fine, but I've just slowed it down. Um, and so how have I done this? I've basically said, as of this year, I said, you know what? I left a corporate job that sucked, that was sucking the life out of me. And I'm working basically as much as I was working for them. Now, granted, again, there is something to be said for what you have to do when you have a startup. But now that I'm going into like year four, I'm saying to myself, well, maybe it's time to really start looking at what you want this thing to look like. What do you really want it to look like? And so I said to myself, well, I don't really want to work five days a week. I mean, I don't think I have to or I should have to, right? I'm my own boss. So I cut off a day of, you know, work. And so I work Monday through Thursday. And actually, I work when I need to. I mean, so I'm always on. I'm available Monday through Thursday for anybody who wants to talk to me about business. Um, but that's not to say that if on a Wednesday I really am not clear, I'm not in it, you know, I'm not on target and I need to step away, I step away. That's it. I just step away and I breathe and that's it. I, you know, I've gotten back to journaling. So journaling is a good thing as well. Um, it was something that I did very sporadic. I really never, you know, did it on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, part of how I got through that time of adversity was to really get my thoughts out on paper. And you wouldn't imagine how cathartic it is to actually, one, get the words out on paper, but also to go back and retrospect and read um, where you were, what you were thinking at that time. Um, it gives you great perspective on life and your business and what you're thinking and ways to improve and also keeps you kind of on target with goals. So um, that was a huge thing too. The other half of it too was, you know, I loved a lot of things before I started becoming this professional, before I had a business, before I became a mom, a wife. I had all these things that I did, right? I used to run races. I was a belly dancer. I danced. I modeled. I mean, I did it. <laughs> and then life happened and I just stopped. Um, rollerblading, biking. I mean, I'm that gal. Like, I get out and I do that. You know, I like to be active. And I just kind of let it all go. And so I said, this is too much, you know, because the reality of it is, and, and why I'm telling you all of this is because it's easy to talk about fitness, like health-wise, taking care of yourself and all of that stuff, but it doesn't mean a damn thing if you're not good here. Like, if you're not happy with yourself and you're not good up here, who cares if you're a size four? Who cares if you're a size two? Who cares how many planks you've done? It doesn't mean a damn thing. It's great. It's fantastic. It'll keep your heart pumping. But the wellness factor really is the key. And, you know, I really caught myself right before a point where I think I was just losing a sense of who is Janine. Like, who's Janine outside of being a mom, outside of being this you know, social media person, mental fitness is absolutely, absolutely. You can't have one without the other. Um, but yeah, I needed to rediscover, you know, who I was outside of mommy, wife, business owner, sister, daughter, you know, the whole nine. And so, you know, little by little, like I'm not saying 100%, but little by little, I'm starting to get back into those things. So like last year, I made a goal. I said, okay, I'm going to sign up for three races. 
three 5Ks and I'm going to do that. And so I did that. And this year I'm going to be back at it again. I'm going to sign up for another few 5Ks and hoping to get some paint. I know the painting. So I have not started the painting yet. Um, but my birthday's coming. My birthday's coming and I did some really good business this week. And so I am treating myself within the next week, if not this weekend, I will be getting my canvases and my paint and my paint brushes. And that's my treat to myself. I am dying <laughs> to do this. Like this is something I want to do. I don't know if my paintings are going to look like anything anybody would ever want. But for some reason here, I feel like it's going to be fun. My birthday is March 27th. It's actually falling on Easter. <laughs> Still deciding whether that's a great thing. Maybe it is. I guess it's an auspicious time. You know, Jesus has risen and Janine was born. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but March 27th. Yes, it is. And I am a creative person. You know, I used to do all these things. I do all kinds of things with arts and crafts. And then I stopped. And I kind of started doing it again Christmas and it, it's starting to come back. And I'm like, you know what? You have this whole creative side to you that you just don't use. And it's just important. It's so important. So I wanted to also share like some other things that I've been doing to kind of keep myself grounded, if you will. So I know it's very, I noticed when you said you like, yes cooking and dancing together so it's like cooking wine and then the music goes on while i'm cooking and there's some serious dancing going on i don't know that anybody will ever get to see but i suspect somebody in my family is gonna like play the hijinks and try to expose me one of these days but that is like nirvana for me cooking and dancing that's all like, I think if I, every Trini, you, you know what? You're rude and out of place, you. <laughs> I guess so. It's the Trinidadian in me, I guess. Um, so I know it's like so, so cliche these days. Everybody seems to be into yoga and all of this stuff. But truthfully, I'm one of those people that took yoga before it was a fad. I was into Pilates before it was a fad, like all of that. And so I do what I can. Um, yes, I belly dance. Yes. And I'm still good at it, guys. I am. So the thing being that I can't really get out to a class like time constraints and whatever. I know. Me too. I love yoga. I have found the Oprah and Deepak Chopra 21 day meditation challenge. If you guys don't know about this, it is phenomenal. So basically there's an app for it. It's again, it's the Oprah and Deepak 21 day meditation challenge and it's free. So it doesn't, it's not ongoing, but like every once in a while, once you sign up on their site, you'll um, get notifications when a new 21 day meditation challenge is going to start. And it is amazing. Like Oprah narrates it. Deepak does the heavy lifting with, you know, the chants and the mantras and all of that. But it made such a difference for me doing it. And I've been doing it for a year. And actually there's a new one coming up, but I they've had ones on success. They've had ones on grace and um, so many different topics that are really pertinent to everything I shared tonight and it's free like it's free you just download the app you sign up and then every day you get they unlock another meditation and you know it's like 15 20 minutes or whatever but I start my day with this it is so refreshing so so refreshing um, so if you're into that kind of thing I know for me, free is for me. I would certainly check into that and, and try to get on it because it's great. Um, as far as like from a technology standpoint, like how do I kind of make my life right? <laughs> right, Lataria? Um, 
So, you know, I talked about this app, but like, here's some other things that I've found to be extremely helpful. So, um, Evernote. I don't know if you use Evernote, but I love Evernote. Um, it's basically almost like a box. If you know um, the box platform or Google Drive, it's like, you know, a, a, a cloud provider basically where you can keep different things, notes, and um, you can do recordings for yourself to remind yourself of stuff. Um, I just recently got put onto the Clipper, the Web Clipper. So there's a Web Clipper plugin, and actually I found this out via Brian Kramer. So if you don't follow Brian Kramer on Twitter, you should. Um, because he has a great course that he just developed on Evernote and I've been using Evernote for years but I learned this just recently so I can do everything there I mean not only do I chat with Kimberly my intern on Evernote and that kind of keeps the email down so that's one thing Two, I send my husband lists for food shopping I send myself lists for things that I need to do um, if I need to remind myself audio wise, I can do that and keep it there. And it's all just housed there. I'm starting to work with somebody that's going to be doing my media kit and some other projects with me. And I was just kind of able to clip exactly what I needed. Must be the jam. Yeah, it's the jam. It really is. I mean, literally, I just onboarded somebody that's going to be helping me with a bunch of things and I just kind of threw clips of things that I like from my media kit into one notebook and sent it off to her and she got it in her email and we're chatting in Evernote at the same time amazing and that's just the free version like I haven't even gotten to the point where I've upgraded which upgrading is negligible but if you don't have Evernote you should have it it makes life really really simple life and business for that matter. Um, the other thing that I've found recently um, and the one thing that I think a lot of people stress out about is email. So I don't even wanna tell you what my email has been in past times because I'm a little embarrassed, um, but it's been pretty horrendous. So SaneBox, it's S-A-N-E-B-O-X, amazing. I got a free run with Sanebox and basically what it does is it comes in, you allow it access to your um, inbox and it just kind of compartmentalizes stuff. It just immediately archives really old things. If you want to never hear from certain people again, you can throw it in your black hole folder. You'll never see anything from them again. Um, you can snooze your email so that you don't have to hear email while you're trying to be productive. There are just so many little things with SaneBox, but it cleared up what was pretty much horrendous um, before into something that was completely manageable for me. So if you are like me, yes, it's free. So you can do a um, free trial, but then... After the trial, it's like $100 for the year. But in my opinion, it is a business expense or an expense that's well worth it. If you get a lot of email and you just need something to kind of do the heavy lifting for you, just pay the money. Like, I'm going to pay the money. Like, they've convinced me. I've done two trials and they've convinced me that the $100 is worth it because anything without same box and I'm losing my mind, literally. So that's same box. Um, food shopping. So I'm putting on my mommy hat. So for those of you out there who are moms and what, yep, same box. That's exactly it. Um, so for those of you who are mommies, wives, you're welcome. Um, and you have to, you're responsible for, you know, procuring the goods for the household and all that stuff like I am. Mimi K knows this. Please, Mimi K knows this. Order your groceries. So I can't tell you what's good in your area of the world, but I just know for me, it has saved lots of time. I mean, I used to literally leave work and plop my child in the middle of the cart and fill like 
the groceries up around her because that's what I had to do to get food shopping done because I didn't want to spend my whole Saturday in the supermarket. But seriously though, Peapod, if you have a stop and shop in your area, for me, um, where I'm living in Suffolk County, shop right from home, amazing. Now granted, yes, will they charge you a fee? Yes, they will. So they charge, I think it's like $6. If they come to your house and deliver, it's like $19.95. And I'm sure somebody will be like, mm, well, I don't really want to pay that. You know what? $19.95, a half an hour of your time to make the order, if that. And you don't have to spend time on lines or walking up and down aisles. You get your time back. And you have food in your house and done and done. That's one of the things that I had to unlearn. Like, there's one thing to be frugal and it's another thing to just know when it makes sense to spend money. And when it makes sense to just delegate certain things. So that's one of the things I have no problem delegating whatsoever. No problem. Exactly. That's the other thing. You're not tempted to buy stuff you don't need and you can control it. And me, I'm a couponer. Love a coupon, love a deal. So, you know, with a lot of these, um, at least the ones through the supermarkets, I don't know so much about some of the other specialty ones, but a lot of them will still take your coupons. Like if you're into that and you're a frugal mama, then you can just have your coupons ready and they take that off and I find they give you a lot of deals too. So, you know, many times I was never even paying that delivery fee. They would say, hey, you know, if you buy a certain amount of meat, we'll give you 30%. If you buy a certain amount of produce, we'll give you this. Yep, the automatic list, that's the other thing. Um, if you do like um, a, a direct debit or something like that, some of them will give you a few dollars off. So you're saving money and you're saving time. Just the little things, the little, little, little things and scheduling. So for me, I tell people all the time, like I get so many inquiries from people about having conversations or wanting to do business. And, you know, a lot of people I find do this on the fly. Like they'll just say, hey, we want to chat with you or whatever. And, oh, I'll just call you this time. And I let them know, like, what's not scheduled doesn't get done. If it's not scheduled, it will not get done. So I literally schedule everything. I schedule my breaks. I schedule the kids stuff. I schedule projects, tasks, everything. If it's not on my calendar, it doesn't exist, literally. Um, and it's out of sight, out of mind because I just have so much. <laughs> yes, mom brain is a real thing. I have so much going on up here at any given time that I just can't process it all unless it's somewhere where I'm getting a ping telling me, hey, this is where you need to be. This is what you need to do. It sounds crazy. And I used to think people were crazy when they said that, but literally that's what it is. Thank you, Kimberly, for throwing up that article. So that said, there are two articles that I'm always trying to have like an article in form where we go with these topics. Um, Kimberly just threw up one. It's called Five Ways to Get a Hold on Stress and Anxiety. So we kind of covered that a bit. Um, the other one is called The Working Mom's Renewable Energy Plan. Really good. It's a 2012 article, so I'm sure it'll seem like it's really old. But the bits and bites that they kind of get at are really, really still relevant, even four years later. They really kind of break down the day of a typical mom and like give you like just some quick tips on like how to get around it. So very, very worth reading, even though it's from 2012. I know people are like a little funny about how long ago things were. But that said, I just wanted to leave you with wellness is important i didn't talk a lot about fitness but i kind of incorporated the fitness aspect in it but i just kind of wanted to give you a reality check on you know me what i've done how i continue to even struggle and relearn how to be more well and how to preserve my own well-being um 
And, you know, one thing I didn't touch on, but I do want to touch on before I let you guys go is be very mindful of who you keep around you and who you let take from you. One of the things that I really had to step back and get a handle on were the people that were pulling apart pieces of me, you know, or if you think of it as a cup and if my cup was running over, it was no longer running over. There was like a drop of water in it after certain people had their way with me. You have to be very, very cognizant of who you keep around you. And this goes for family as well. I have been very methodical about letting my family know and friends know when I need time for me, I need time for me, right? And there's a circle of trust. Please, Mimi K is in that circle of trust. Um, everybody else is peripheral to my situation. Doesn't mean I don't love you. Doesn't mean I don't respect you. It just means you're not in the nucleus. That's all. And that's okay. But absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a time suck. It's a soul suck. And... I decided at the end of last year that I was going to just set certain people straight and let them decide whether it was still, they could still jive with this new Janine and whether or not they were worthy of staying within the circle, the nucleus. And some people dropped off and I'm good with that. I'm fine with that. But, you know, I had somebody recently say to me, hey, you know, the past two weekends, a reality absolutely you know and I'm fine but I'm so fine with it Lataria like I really am I had somebody say to me recently you know these past two weekends I'm calling you and I'm calling your house calling and you're not answering and I had stuff to talk to you about and I was like I know I was recharging and they're like but I had stuff to talk to you about like you need to make time and I'm like well while I'd love to be there for you, I can't do anything for you if I'm depleted. I will. I, I can't even lend you my ear if I'm depleted. And right now, my business is on such an on-ramp that literally by Friday and definitely by Saturday, I need to just disconnect from everything and everyone. And I need to be with my family and I need to be quiet, like in my own head. Yes, block real quick. I just don't answer because you know what? Here, here's my mantra. I hope you guys use it too. I'm a grown ass woman, grown, fully grown. Can you see a grown ass woman? And my whole thing is I do what I please. I do what I want and I do what pleases me. And it doesn't mean that I won't do for other people. Yes, yes, Kimberly, yes. <laughs> I will do what pleases other people. I will do for other people. I have no problem. But I heard Oprah speak recently and she said the reason why she can give so much is because her cup runneth over because she takes care of her. Well, that too, Mimi K, that too. So, you know, she just spoke from a place, she was speaking to Stanford business students and she said, you know, the reason why I'm so philanthropic and the reason why I, sh I can give so much is because my cup runneth over. I'm taking care of me. She goes, yes. She goes, conceited, haughty, full of myself. She goes, yes, I'm full of myself because, right. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you putting yourself first. In fact, you should put yourself first. Wasn't it great, Lataria? You must put yourself first. You are no good to anybody, let alone yourself, if you don't put yourself first. So I have gotten very, very strict about my time. Very strict about my time. And my weekends, if I, when I'm done, I'm done. The phone is not getting answered. I've actually unplugged the phone because I feel like, you know what, if it's an emergency, you'll find me somehow. You just will. Um, but nine times out of ten, what they claim is an emergency is never an emergency. And ain't nobody got time for that. I don't. 
have time for that. Like, just don't. And so boundaries. And if there's anything that you can take from what I just said is don't be afraid to set boundaries because if you don't set the boundaries, they will just keep taking. That's just how this works. You have to set the boundaries. Nobody just says, oh, you know what? She does need the rest. Let her rest. Or, oh, I, she really doesn't need to have her ear chewed off. Let me not chew her ear off. No, no, no. They'll chew your ear off as long as you allow them. You teach people how to treat you. You teach people how to treat you. I believe that. And so I make sure that people are very clear that I love them with all my heart. I will give them the shirt off my back, but you will not deplete me. There's no way. You will not deplete me to the point where I have nothing for myself. And there you go. <laughs> so I will end on that note. I will tell you what's going on on the blog. So on the blog this week, I have an article up about the three reasons why companies should be welcoming mothers back to work. And so that's up. Um, it also includes the recap and replay from last week. So if you didn't catch last week, you can certainly read the article or just scroll to the bottom and get to the video, whichever. Um, it's there and also up on my YouTube channel. Um, I also shared last week about my social media academy and personal branding academy that's kicking off in April with work like a mother. So you will see a lot of that circulating around both on the Aristocracy of HR Facebook page and there'll be more said on the blog as well in the next week. So thank you so much for hopping on. I appreciate it. Thank you, David. Thank you, Dom Tillman. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Lataria. Kimberly, you're awesome. Um, I think it was a Jay Fusen that jumped on that I haven't seen before, laying and lurking, but thank you for jumping on. I appreciate you guys. I hope it was helpful. And um, share, share, share. Share it with your friends. Let them know about this episode. And I appreciate you. I'll be back next week to talk some more. Haven't quite decided what, but we'll chat again. Oh, thanks so much. Yes, I am. Are you going, David? I am going to that IBM event, and I'm really excited. I'll talk more about that. Pro Yay! I'll see you there. I can't wait. I'm excited. All right, guys. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. Be well. And I'll see you next week. All right, bye.